Thanks for coming out. We've got a few people joining me on stage. I'm sure they don't need any introduction, but I'm going to introduce them anyway. We have Neil Magny. We have Karolina Kowalkovic and UFC welterweight legend Matt Hughes. Please give them a round of applause as they join me on stage. Here we go. Keep the round of applause going. Keep it going. Keep it going. Okay, so we should have two microphones set up. We have one just there and one just there. If you have questions, please grab a microphone and, and, and shout them out to us. First one, anybody joining us for a question? No, okay, there we go, red shirt. Hi, uh, thank you very much for coming all the way to Germany. Great to have some legends here. I have two questions. First question is, what's your take on uh, fighters unions? Second one's a bit longer. Um, so there's a development in the last couple of years that retired fighters are coming back to fight. You, Matt, have fought BJ Penn, and I was wondering what's your take on fighters coming back? Who was the first question for? Go for it, Matt. You start us off. Am I on? Am I on? Uh, I'm not a union fan, uh, bottom line. I think unions started as a, as a good thing back in the day, but they turned into a monster. So I, I, I just don't see, I don't see the need for it. Fighters have the choice of fighting for any organization they want. They've got the choice of playing baseball, basketball, football, swinging a hammer, being a lawyer, doing anything they want, but they wanted to fight. Um, when I started out, it wasn't for the money. I fight and compete. So I just don't see the need for a union. Number two, on the fighters coming back, I don't blame BJ Penn for coming back. He's sitting on a couple losses. I'm sitting on a couple losses. I'd love to come back and uh, get a win, get my hand raised, and walk out then. Um, so if BJ wants to come back, more power to him. Other guys? Neil? Carolina? Comments on the uh, Fighters Union? The Fighters Union? Uh -huh. Either of you. Um, well, that's one of the things that could work great for the fighters, but it, it all could, could work against them as well. Uh, there's not much information out on it just yet, so this is kind of one of those things you got to sit back and see how it unfolds. Cool. Thank you. Next question. Thank you. Um, this one goes to Matt. It's been rumored that GSP is making a comeback. If he so happens to get that title, uh, will you be coming for it? I'm, uh, I'm 42 years old. My days of fighting for the title are probably long gone, so I, I kind of doubt it. You know, these guys are tough. Uh, look at Robbie Lawler. I don't want to go in there against a guy like Robbie Lawler. Take, uh, take those big punches like that. I just don't. Um, after I got done fighting, I had a bunch of dental work done, so my dentist told me no more punches to the head. So you will not see me fighting for the title anytime soon. All right, thanks. Cool, thank you. Line up behind these two microphones if you have questions. Um, I I'm gonna start off. Neil, w where are you at after your last fight? Obviously, you wanna get back on a winning track. Y you've, you've had such a, a crazy roll through the welterweight division over the last sort of two, I mean, you had 10 fights over two years, if I'm not incorrect, with 2014, 2015. W what do you do to get back on a winning track? Is it, is it fighting five times a year that works for you, or do you wanna pull back and start picking your opponents now? Uh, right now, it's definitely time for me to pull back just a little bit. Uh, go back to the drum ball, figure out what I did wrong going into that fight, kind of work on making those improvements. But at the end of the day, I'm a fighter. I go out there and I take risks. That sort of allowed me to get the position I'm, I'm, I'm in now. Uh, my entire career was based off of taking risks, and I don't see myself doing anything different at this point in my career. So um, the first thing first, make sure I'm healthy, and then go out there and uh, keep chasing that title. Good answer. And, and of the fights that you've had, which is the one that the fans come to and speak to you about the most? I'm assuming it's the Lombard fight. Which, uh, which of your fights do the, do the fans speak to you about the most out of all your wins in the UFC? <laughs> out of all your wins in the UFC, which is the one that the fans speak to you about the most? Oh, the Hector Lombard fight for sure. I mean, to uh, literally beat a guy out of a division, I think that's one of the best accomplishments you can do. I mean, before I fought Hector Lombard, he's never been finished in a pro fight before, and uh, he was undefeated at welterweight, so to literally beat him out of the division was pretty uh, good accomplishment for me. And Carolina, title shot next? I hope so. <laughs> I am ready for title shot. What do you guys think? Title shot? Uh, and what are, you, what are your thoughts on Joanna? Obviously, she's, she's a, a very strong champion. Uh, yes, I uh, know uh, Joanna. 
Uh, she's from Poland like me. I like her very much. She's really amazing fighter. I, re I respect her. She's the best on the world and I won't fight with the best. Seems fair to me. <laughs> And Matt, t tell me about your, I keep bumping into you wherever I go in the world, whenever I'm working for the UFC, you're there flying the flag. What was it like to be a retired fighter and, and still be a part of the organization that you helped to build? I, I uh, me, Chuck Liddell and Forrest Griffin and Dan, you, you as well, have been, uh, been lucky enough to get these jobs at the end of our career. So I, I love it. I've got my foot in the door. I'm in a position where I can, I can help the fighters if they, if they want it. So I'm, I'm just lucky to uh, still be in the organization, still watch my friends, still, still get to help the, help the fighters out. So I'm lucky. Uh, and what about the fights this weekend? Obviously, we have two veterans of the heavyweight division. We have Josh Barnett, Andre Olovsky facing off in a fight that probably should have happened, you know, many years ago. I was listening to you backstage, actually, on some of the stuff you did, the breakdown of the center. I'm like, have these guys fought? How have these guys not fought before? Uh, just to let you know, gosh, I think Orlovsky, when I fought for the title, was maybe one of Orlovsky's first fights in the UFC. I was at the event where Orlovsky uh, had his first fight. And uh, Josh has been in the fight game since, long, I think, as long or longer than I have. So these are two cats that uh, I like to watch. I like to watch the old guys fight. Uh, so these are, this is a very interesting fight for me. I'm just super surprised, just like you, that these guys haven't fought before because they've been in the division. They've been in the UFC for a long time. Mm. And I have, I have a question about fighters coming into their prime later in their career. Obviously, Damian Meyer is, is a lot older than most people would be at their prime. Um, these two heavyweights, you know, nearing 40 now. What do you think it is about fighters that when they've matured, they start to have a better understanding of the game? Um, you know, I thought I was in my prime from maybe, maybe uh, 28 to 32 was, was in my prime. And after that, I just, I had a back injury and it just got, got worse. Without that back injury, I don't know. Uh, Raina Couture was winning titles at 40 some years old. So, yeah. I mean, these guys can, can definitely compete. Um, they both got a great game plan. They both will have a great game plan coming into it. Both can strike very well. Both are well versed on the ground, uh, takedowns. So it'll be very interesting, really interesting to me how the fight goes and who has the better night. I mean, um, you can have the best game plan in the world. You can be in the best shape of your life, and just your game plan doesn't work out for you. So we'll just have to see. Mm. Okay, I think we have a, a question. Yeah. Oh, so we got an echo. Uh, my question is. Is for everybody on the panel since um, this money fight is a big issue right now. What's your old guys' money fight there? If we start with Neil. My ideal money fight is whatever fight I'm in. I mean, I'm going out there putting a great performance for the fans, so that never changes for me. Uh, I don't worry about the paying things like that going out there. I just worry about performing my best, and that's when the paychecks come in. So I don't worry too much, like, oh, I'm going to fight so and so and get paid a lot of money for it. I just go out there and put on a great show, and uh, checks come because of it. Okay. Title fight. <laughs> you just fight. Title fight. Title, Title fight. fight. Okay. Fight with Jana. Yeah. <laughs> Come on then, Matt. Let's let's hypothetically speaking, what's yeah, your Yeah, hypothetically. Fight? Although you did say you did say a minute ago, if I don't remember, if I remember it correctly, you did say that you won't fight for a title again. But you didn't write after you say you won't fight. I again. I I could be. I could come out of retirement. Oh, I heard it here first. Heard it here first. Um, <laughs> I, dis I disagree with all these fighters talking about money fights. Um, go out there and just compete. You know, I, you can't hold all the fighters back and be on the and all the good fighters be on the one card that's a big money fight. It takes a lot of fighters, you know, to be the main event of different cards like like this. So, you know, you need Andre and, and uh, Josh to step up to the plate and be the main event here. So. I disagree with all the fighters taking, you know, wanting to wait around for a big pay-per-view card. It's just, it's just, just not right. Me, I would love to come out and fight. Uh, it'd probably have to be somebody a little older, you know. Uh, I just like the talkers, um, and, and Matt Sarah's always talked about me. <laughs> uh, he thought he won that fight, so that would be a fight I'd come out of retirement. He's never making well to wait Matt again. Sarah. <laughs> and Dan, when are you coming back? The outlaw. <laughs> come on. When are you coming back? How old are you, Dan? How, what's, what's your age? I've just turned 34. 30, still 34. Still somewhat in so, your prime. So I'm getting old as well now. <laughs> <laughs> no, I have some time. Um, I have actually started the process of getting cleared now. Um, 
I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have to see where, where the sport is. I, I'm, my main focus is commentary and analysis now. I love this job. I love being able to immerse myself in a fight and pull it apart and really focus on two fighters individually, and I don't have to put myself into the equation. Uh, the, these, these guys will tell you, when you're training for a fight yourself, you look at your opponent and then you look at yourself, and you can never remove yourself from that equation. Whereas when you take a step back, I can just enjoy the beauty of mixed martial arts for what it is. So it, although it's disappointing for me not to be fighting, it's so nice to be removed from it so I can be a fan again. Um, but but, but I have to say, I love your commentary, man. Analysis is uh, wonderful. I watch it every time. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Next question, please. Uh, Matt, involved in some of uh, my favorite fights, just wondering, what are your top three fights? Outside of your own? Top three fights outside of your own. I'll translate for you. It's all right. He's from the same island as me. It's fine. <laughs> um, top three fights, not my own. Well, any, any Chuck Liddell fight, any really uh, Robbie Lawler fight, I like, I like people who go out there and try and hurt their opponent. I dislike people who just go out and try not to lose rounds. Uh, I want to go out and watch somebody who goes out there to knock their opponent out. And, and that's what I like to see. Uh, big Chuck Liddell fan, big Rob Lawler fan. Um, that, those are my two guys. Thank you. Thank you. It is a question from me, actually, about the way that fighters approach fights now. Because certainly when I got into the sport and when I was watching you competing in the UFC, it wasn't about winning rounds. You were trying to win the fight. You were trying to beat the guy up. Do, do you see how the scoring has changed the sport and how it has become much more of a, we've got to win this round, you know, that kind of thing? You know, um, when, I, when I watch fighters, I can tell who's out there to win the round and who's out there to create as much, the most amount of damage against their opponent. So it's easy for me to tell who, who the guys are. And I just, I just dislike it. Now, at the end of every round, at the last 30 seconds of the fight, my cornerman always told me when that time came because I wanted to maybe steal that round from my opponent. Yes, you always, in a perfect world, the fight never goes to the decision but sometimes it does. So you always want to make sure the round's in your favor if it was close. But um, I always went out there, not reckless, but I went out there and gave everybody a super hard first round. I really wanted to break them down mentally. And if you break somebody down mentally, uh, they'll crumble physically right afterwards. So I gave everybody a very hard first round. Um, I typically never lost the first round. And then after that, it, the, the fight just got easier for me because they decided maybe they'd go wash their hair in the shower instead <laughs> of coming out and fight. So I always gave people a very hard first round for that reason. Um, I don't think I ever lost a decision. I never lost a decision, so that, that was in my favor. But, um, yeah, I went out to create damage on my opponent, not to win rounds. You can cut that. That's good. Next question, please. How's it going? How are Thanks you, Thanks all of you for being here. Dan, keep up the good work, yeah? Thank you, Mike. Uh, this question is for Matt talking about retirement and uh, the UFC 204 with Henderson and Bisping. Obviously a big fight for both fellas. Um, Bisping obviously wants to get that win back and defend that belt, but Henderson wants to go out with a bang. What camp do you feel has more of a pressure going into this and what do you think the outcome is going to be? Both guys will have pressure. Uh, Dan's finally got his, his big fight. He's, you know, he's, I, I think he's won two out of his last six or something. So this is a huge fight for him. If he wins this fight, I, I think he retires. So he's, there's a lot of pressure on him to go out uh, with another loss or to go out, you know, as the champion. Biz being, uh, he's got a lot of pressure too. It's a lot, there's a lot more pressure in defending the belt. I've always said you're not a champion until you defend your belt. Just because it, there's, there's a lot of pressure in that. It's easy to win the belt compared to all the defenses afterwards. So. He's going, to have, he's going to have some pressure, too. You know, people, people change. That confidence of, of being the champion can either help you and hurt you. And really, I think it's going to help Michael. Um, that confidence that he is the champion is going to propel him a little bit. I think he's going to be a lot better fighter. The best Michael Bisping could be his next fight because he knows he's the champion. He feels it, and he's working to, to keep the title. And what did, what did the rest of you guys think up there about the fight? About uh, Henderson, Henderson. Henderson Bisping? 
Uh, man, I hope uh, that uh, Henderson will pull that one off. I mean, it'll be great for him to just go ahead and uh, get that win and retire. I mean, that'd be the most epic retirement ever to leave your belt and gloves in the center of the octagon and just have lights close out. I mean, that's I couldn't ask for a better finish than that. She's focused on a title fight. It doesn't even matter about the middleweight division. We're, we're not even going to talk about <laughs> Thanks, it. Thanks, guys. Title fight. <laughs> Next question, please. Uh, the, quest the question goes to Matthews. Um, I want to ask you, what do you think about the Russian, the great Russian fighter Rustam Habilov? He has his fight tomorrow. I, I really haven't been watching him, so that, that's, that's my fault. I'm sorry about that. I can't, I can't tell you anything about him. Uh, okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Another question. Hi, guys. Hello. Uh, I got a question for all of you. Uh, who is your favorite fighter and why? Oh, that's going to be a tough question for everybody. Past, present, future. Yeah. Whatever. Active, retired? Active. Active. Robbie Lawler. No <laughs> doubt about it. Always a safe one. Always a safe one. Robbie Lawler. You can at least lie to me, man. I'm sitting right here in front of you. <laughs> <laughs> Favorite fighter? Active. I was going to say Matt Hughes, but uh, let's see. <laughs> <laughs> Active. Oh, you're coming out of retirement. We've already established that. Oh, I have to go with Demi Maia right now, dude. I mean, the guy's has been so impressive, especially the last four yeah. fights. I mean, it's hard to uh, overlook what he's done in the sport in the last couple of years. And uh, my favorite fighter uh, is uh, Martin Polish Zombie Brzosek. He's my friend from my gym. <laughs> he sits <laughs> <it> there. <laughs> I think we'll be seeing him in the UFC soon. I'm confident. And for you then? Uh, favorite active fighter at the moment? There's a lot of guys I enjoy watching. Um, I think Cody Garbrandt's got a lot of skill. Um, I certainly think that when we see him in a deeper fight, we're going to see the best of him. Um, uh, Thomas Almeida, as well, is someone that I really think is on an on a, on a upward trajectory. Um, obviously, his last fight was unfortunate, but the, the skill that that kid's got in comparison to everybody else in the division is, is really shocking. Um, and I think he's only going to get better and better. Um, there's, a, there's, there's so much talent in the UFC right now. It's difficult to pick one. Um, my favorite fighter changes from day to day. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Look, I have one question while, while we've got a break. There's two mics. We're going to be wrapping up in a second, but if you've got a question, make sure you get behind a mic and ask us. I have one question for Matt, which I heard a while ago, um, and I want you to confirm it for me. So before an event, when you were fighting, you would go into the octagon and you would walk around and check for the hardest part of the octagon to slam your opponent onto. That, that happened in, in another, not in the UFC, but okay. in, a, in a WEF event, I walked around, there was a big pole on the bottom side of the octagon, and that was the, that was the <laughs> hardest point. So when I picked my opponent up, I took him to the middle, and I slammed him. Um, have we all seen Frank Trick, too, when I fought Frank Trick the second time? Oh, yeah. Well, Frank had me down and out, and I was on the opposite side of the octagon. Um, I, could, I knew exactly where I was at, because his cornermen were right there yelling in his ear. <laughs> And so I knew that my cornerman was, was all the way away. When I, and when I started dumping people, I always dumped them uh, in front of my cornerman so I could hear my corner and my opponent couldn't hear his corner. So when I picked Frank Trigg up, I ran him across the octagon because I wanted to hear my cornerman and I didn't want him to be able to hear his cornerman. So in theory, I, always used, I really tried dumping my, my guys in front of my corner okay. so I had, I had all the advantage and he had the disadvantage. That makes sense. Although Pat Milicic can yell pretty loud. So, I mean, if you're in the top seats at the back, you can still hear Pat shouting. So. <laughs> Another question. Hello. Um, Hello. I have a question for Matt. Um, hi. Um, if you were to go back to in the past and meet the young yourself, what advice would you give yourself? Knowing that the sports has changed so much in the last few years. I really wouldn't change a whole lot. Um, Back then, we just trained extremely hard. It wasn't real smart. It was just we beat up on each other, and we just trained real hard. If I had to go back, I'd, I'd probably limit my, my hard training and do things more smarter and, and not quite take so many bumps and bruises during practice. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Let's go for this mic over here. Yeah. Uh, this one's for everyone. Um, Conor McGregor versus Nate Diaz, number three. Who you got? <laughs> Connor Nate number three. Who wants to take that one first? I, um, I would think that, that Nate would maybe work on his takedowns a little bit and get it to the ground. Um, 
But I, I mean, I don't know. I would have thought it would have got to the ground before it did last time. With the last 10, 15 seconds or something yeah. was, on, was on the ground. So I, I got to put a little faith in Nate that it's going to get to the ground. And as soon as it hits the ground, it's in Diaz world. Neil? If it's at 170 again, I can probably see Nate Diaz win that fight again. But uh, if they go down to 155, I think the edge might go to Connor in that sense. I don't know. I like Connor, I like uh, Diaz, and really, I don't know. It's all about the title fight. It's all about the title fight. Um, if you want my opinion, I think it's a very different fight. I think you're right. At 170, it's a very different fight than 155. I think Connor has a much better chance at lightweight. Um, I think he carries the weight better. I think he moves better when he's lighter. At, at welterweight, I think Nate Diaz is always going to be hard work for him just because of the, the sheer size. Um, and with the takedowns, I agree. I, I would like to see Nate expand on his wrestling game a little bit, but his, his method of wrestling has always been to make you shoot like he did in the first fight with Connor. Um, and I, I, don't, I don't see the Diaz brothers altering at all. I think that that's kind of their preset, and I would expect him to do that again. So just more stocks and slaps next time, I would think. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Next question. Hello, my uh, name is Adrian, and uh, I came for Andre Arlowski. So uh, my question is for Matt Hughes. I picked I pick him because uh, he's, uh, he have more experience in MMA fighting. So my question is, who did you pick tomorrow night uh, on main event, Andre Arlovski versus, versus Barnett? I didn't pick anybody. Uh, <laughs> I think it's actually a pretty competitive fight. I've talked to a couple people out there. Some have went with Barnett. Some have went with Arlovski. So I don't know. I don't know who's going to win. Um, it's going to be tough, you know. I think against the cage, uh, Josh is going to have an advantage. I think Josh is going to have the advantage on the ground, too. He's very, very slick with his submissions. Striking, you know, um, is going to be close, but i probably give a little advantage to Andre. So it all depends on where the fight's fought at. As we all know, every round starts on your feet, so Andre's going to have an advantage as soon as that, that whistle blows for every round. Thank you very much. Our last he will win tomorrow by TKO second round. <laughs> Thank you. Hard Rock. Hello. My first question is from Matthews. Uh, as a former champion, what would you say about Rumble Johnson and John Jones? Who got the first shot at Daniel Cormier? I think, I think Jones uh, should get the first shot at him whenever he gets off suspension. I mean, they should match up like three times, and Jones didn't make it two times. Yeah, well, they fought once. You know that? Yeah. So you say John Jones? Yeah. All right. Uh, you know, uh, DC's great fighter. He's, he's won the belt. He's defended the belt. But he hasn't beat the champion. So, I mean, that's, that's who John Jones, that's who DC should want to fight, the guy that was the champion. Uh, my next question is for the other two. What is your weight, actual weight right now? Uh, while I'm in Germany, might be a little bit heavier. I've been enjoying a lot of German food lately. But uh, normally I'm walking around between 185 and 190, and I fight at 170. So uh, the weight cuts aren't too hard for me at all. all right. uh, usually my weight is uh, something like 57, 59 kilograms. All right. And my last question is, can we get the picture together? <laughs> we'll, we'll be around after, sir. We'll, we'll figure that out for you. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Next question, Pride T-shirt. Hi, I'm Abdul from Egypt. I have a question for the four of you guys. Uh, if UFC allowed a two-on-two -two, uh, MMA fight, who would your tag partner be and why? <laughs> Robbie Lawler. <laughs> Get that big hit in, knock somebody out. Two-on-one. <laughs> if you asked me 15 minutes ago, I probably would have said Matt Hughes, but uh, <laughs> we're in the with that being said, I'll probably go with the heavyweight. I mean, Barnett or Lassie, give me any heavyweight to back me up. <laughs> I, I would go with Mark Hunt. I just I could just stand behind him. <laughs> I've got it all figured out. I've been thinking about this for some time. <laughs> Thank you. Next question, Fight Club. Ahoy. Um, I've got a question for Matt. Um, quite a boring one, but still interested. <laughs> so, um, what happened to the military fighting system when I grew up with MMA? You were one of the greatest camps ever with you, Lawler, and I don't know, Jens Pulver and Sylvia. But now it seems quite to slow down. Could you give some insight? 
Yeah, um, Jer Jeremy Horn was the first one that moved away. Uh, he moved away. Then I started a gym down in Granite City. I brought Robbie with me. Um, Jens is still around the area. Tim Sylvia is still around the area. But we just kind of went, kind of went our own, our own direction. Um, it was three and a half hours for me to drive, so I, I had an apartment up there and a house back in Hillsboro. So it was just a lot easier for me to stay at home. And, and Jeremy still has a gym in Salt Lake City, where, where he originally moved. And um, there's not even a militant's gym anymore. Uh, they've, it's been torn down, so <laughs> bad thing. But you know, we've, we're all out of the sport now, and, and we're not. We're not. Needed, none of us are training anymore, so we, we were all out of the gym anyway. What a pity. You know, you're, you're right. At one time, we, we could have been the best gym in the world. Um, we had a lot of world champions. Rich Franklin used to come over and train with us, a former world champion. Dave Manet, former uh, middleweight world champion, used to come down and train with us. So we had a lot of guys there. And it wasn't necessarily Pat that, that, um, that, that taught everybody. Jeremy Horn taught me most of what I know. Jens Pulver helped me out on my feet. I mean, we all just kind of helped each other. So it, it was a great learning experience for me. Thank you. Next question, please. Hi. Um, first of all, I want to thank the UFC to come to Hamburg because Germany has a lot of UFC fans and to have it in this beautiful city is really, really great. And it makes it hell a lot easier for me to get here because I come from here. <laughs> <laughs> and I have two questions. First, uh, what do you think about the new um, season of the Ultimate Fighter with just champions and then the winner gets to fight Johnson. What is your opinion? I like it. I think it's pretty cool. We definitely need somebody to come in there against uh, uh, Mighty Mouse. I mean, he's wrecking everybody, so I think it's a great concept. Um, but on paper, it could be a lot different than what it actually is, so we'll just have to see how it plays out. Uh, I think it's great. I mean, it brings a new aspect to, uh, to Ultimate Fighter. I mean, uh, a lot of people get to the last season or the last uh, fight in Ultimate Fighter, and they're kind of just fighting and holding on to get that contract. So now you have a guy who wins the show, and he's going out there to fight and actually uh, win a title. So I feel like he's going to come out with a lot more fighting him rather than just like, I just want to hold on to get that contract. He wants to go out there and like pretty much become the best man in the world by being the prom, prom best uh, fighter in the world. So I think it'll be a lot more interesting for the, in the finale. Yeah. It's an amazing opportunity for champions to come into a house and be, be working together to fight the best in the world at their weight class. And it's, we need something to shake up the flyweight division because if you look at all of the champions, they've changed over the past well, two years. That the belts in each weight division have, have been passed around, whereas Demetrius Johnson's the only one that's had it locked down. And there are champions all over the world in different organizations. And the UFC has done a smart thing by going out and recruiting the best in the world and bringing them together. And, and seeing if there's somebody else out there that can challenge him, because so far there's been nobody. So I'm excited to see it. And I've been chatting to Joe Benavidez, and I know him and Henry Cejudo don't get on, so I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing that as well. <laughs> okay, and the uh, second question is, um, how long does it take for the adrenaline after fight to like, fall, da fall off, and then, then you, you um, notice that you have some injuries? Because in the ring, I guess the adrenaline is so high that you, I mean, you, you feel that you're bleeding, but how long does it take after the fight to really feel that? That's a good question. Who wants to say that one? Um, I mean, as a fighter, I don't think you're, you're never like, oh, I feel great. Nothing on me hurts. I mean, uh, even walking up the stairs, you feel something kind of like, ah, oh, my hips kind of tight, my shins kind of bruised. Like, you always have something going on with you. So, like, even after a fight, you're dealing with some nagging injuries you had before the fight anyway. So it's it's never a point where you're just like, oh, I feel 100 percent after that fight. I'm ready to go again. Like, it's always something nagging. Always after fight, I feel uh, great, uh, but uh, the day after fight, when I woke up, uh, I feel everything. And this is terrible, really. <laughs> Sleep is the enemy in that situation. I usually stay up for about three days to avoid the, <laughs> the, the inevitable pain and discomfort, but it's weird. You, you find, like, a week later, you'll be, you'll be finding bruises and marks on you that you didn't even notice before. So we, we all kind of live with injuries and, and, and a bit beaten up anyway, so you get used to feeling... But the, the one th even, a, even like a quick 10 second fight, afterwards you still feel aching because of the adrenaline dump. It's, it's a very strange process of fight. Thank you. Cheers, and have a great time in this beautiful city. Thank you. Thanks. Next question. Have I frightened you? <laughs> the hat really sets off the cape, well, I've got I'm to say. To, I'm trying to keep up with Mr. Buffer. <laughs> What's your question, uh, sir? Can I just ask you your thoughts, uh, all the four of you, on 
uh, you're on about recruiting best in the world, and UFC has just recruited uh, Mark Dicasey in light, lightweight division. Yep. Who's very exciting, and is here today supporting Scott Askham. Well, I'll take that one because I'm not sure most of you will know Mark Dicasey yet. Um, he's a, he's a, a British prospect that's just been signed uh, from another organization. His last fight against Kane Musa was devastating. Uh, and he's at ASW with, with, with Darren Morris. So I know he's in a good team. He's got, you know, great, great fighters around him like Mike Wilkinson, Scott Askham. Obviously, good inspiration for him. But he's another one of those talents that you're not going to really see what he's capable of until you see him with the best in the world. And now we're going to get to see that in the UFC. Totally agree with you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Next question. Hi. Uh, question for everybody. Just your opinion about uh, what you have seen, what you have seen do today. I mean, about the ranking position. What is the more important today to be the number one contender or the more hype like McGregor? Because we have Khabib, he's number one. He never lose. He get no title shot. And a guy like McGregor, you always talking. You have this title shot. So what? is the most important today? The ranking or the talking? Uh, personally, I think the most important thing is the fight that's in front of you. Uh, you can't get too far ahead and look at what other people are doing or what other people are earning. Uh, I mean, he's ranked number one, but with that being said, he hasn't not been injured for like the last two and a half years either. So uh, there are a lot of things that go into consideration when it comes down to who's getting next title shot. So the biggest thing for fighters to have to worry about is like, all right, wh who's next in front of me and uh, what do I need to work on to take care of that guy? Thank you. Thank you. Two more questions, these last two guys. Hi. Hi. GSP versus Tyron Woodley, Stephen Thompson, Demi Mai, who you got and why? And secondly, props to Carolina for making Polish MMA even more popular. So the first two was, uh, you said Stephen Thompson against Stephen Thompson, Tyron Woodley, and Damian Meyer versus GSP. Who you got and why? Okay. Uh, that's not what you said. You said GSP <laughs> versus Woodley, Thompson versus Damian Meyer. Well, so that's so, interesting too. Isn't that what he said? <laughs> that's interesting too. <laughs> he did. That was the, yeah. So we're going with the actual matchup for the welterweight title now, which I believe is Stephen Thompson, right? Is that I don't know, that's major? kind of a biased question for me to answer. I mean, the answer for me would be throw all the names in a hat and let me pick a number and see who I fight. But uh, it's kind of hard to answer that question and not be biased. I mean, I want to fight every one of those guys, so it makes it a bit difficult. What's your game plan versus GSP if you were the one to fight him? Jab all day long. Jab, jab, jab. I mean, <laughs> I'm the longest reach in the division, so I'll just keep him at bay and jab until he's done. Uh, the other fights, you want to you wanna make a call? Uh, well, I don't even know which, which two he's won. Well, let's, let's go with, let's go with uh, Thompson against, um, against the champion, against Woodley. That, that's that's going to be an interesting fight. Um, from what Thompson did with Hendricks, he does the same thing. He's the next welterweight champion. I mean, I'm just surprised that Johnny couldn't get his left hand on him. I mean, it's funny, when Johnny would throw that left hand, it's like Thompson moved to the side, watch him go by, and then punch him twice. As soon as he stopped, I mean, it was just amazing. I mean, right? Was, yeah, amazing. I was astonished that, that, that Johnny didn't get his hands on him. Um, so this could be the exact same thing. You know, Robbie is a close friend of mine. When he fought Tyron, I didn't want Robbie to, be, to have, get, just, we'll say this is, this is Tyron. I didn't want Robbie to be here with him. You know, where you're right in that, where, when you're right in that distance where you're, you feel safe, but you're close enough where he can take that jab. I wanted Robbie to be so far out that he was completely safe or so far close that Tyron couldn't close that distance. So, I mean, GSP won't play that game against him, and neither will, neither will um, Wonderboy. I mean, they just they know what his game plan is, and, and it's going to be hard for him to execute that same knockdown again, I believe, you know, because when you... As a fighter, we go out there, we find people's tendencies and, te and people's, we find our opponent's tendencies and weaknesses and you try and use them against them. So, I mean, that's one of the things my, my camp and I would pick up on is what's Tyron going to do down the road? You know, that's the typical punch he's, he's thrown. Thank you. I'm afraid we're going to wrap it up right now. We're going to get the fighters out to get the weigh-in started. Give these guys a round of applause as they leave stage. Thank you. Thank you, guys.
Thank you. Be back out in two minutes. Sit tight. There's a lot of people that thought that we had seen the last of the pit bull, the guy who terrified the heavyweight division. The reality of the heavyweight division is these guys are so big, they hit so hard, that any one legitimate shot that lands could potentially end a fight at any moment. Arlovsky puts it forward! Pitbull looking to finish up! 